three. So we start right now. How are we doing today? Uh, hi, Kirtika. Good to see you here. So in my last two Facebook lives, I talked about something very, very important, which was unconscious bias. One was unconscious bias and second was privileges that we have. Both are very interrelated topic. And today's topic is Kirtika, am I clear? Am I audible? A very, very common question these days. So what we, uh, what I was saying is a, a very interrelated topic is of stereotypes. It is very, very, it is related to unconscious bias. Thank you, Kirtika. Uh, it's related to unconscious bias as well as privilege. Now, uh, have you been stereotyped? Have you been uh, have you been judged based on where you uh, where you belong to, based on where uh, based on your skin color, based on your height, based on your you know mark, uh, mark, marks in your exams and anything? So these are all stereotypes that we have. That and don't be uh, people look for confirmations of the stereotypes that they carry about other people. So for example, let me. Uh, Let's take a couple of examples. Women can't drive. <laughs> I'm sure all of you are laughing on that. So women can't drive is a very, very common stereotype. When you are driving on the road and, uh, and there's a woman in the other car who's driving and she makes a mistake, what comes out? Ah, women can't drive. And on the other side, there's this man who's driving and he makes some mistakes and what comes out is he can't drive so when it is he it is when a man makes a mistake it is he and the sentence starts with a he and when a woman makes a mistake the sentence starts with women so that's what stereotypes are it is uh, stereotypes are defined as assumptions or fixed um, fixed generalized belief that we have about groups of people or any group <clears throat> one example that i've already given you uh, is women can't drive other example is uh, men are better engineers millennials are impatient startups are, are by millennials um, uh, um, people above 60 are not technologically savvy then uh, and a whole lot of them I'm sure if you can remember anything I'd be almost welcome if you can type what you've experienced as a stereotype for you and uh, all of us have stereotypes now stereotypes is absolutely harmful because we analyze an individuals based on the stereotype we have about the group that that individual belongs to and it impacts all of us in many many ways mm, for uh, you know there's a in the west it is a common assumption that women are not good at maths and with the number of engineers we have in our country that's a myth and if you're aware that there are a whole lot of there are quite a few banks in india which are headed by women yeah, Archana, women can't be breadwinners, yes, and they are the second earners in the family. So thank you for that. It is such a huge stereotype. And even in double income families where both, I mean, of course, I'm not talking about single women, but I'm also talking about double income families where maybe the woman is earning more than the man, but the breadwinner is the man and the woman is the second income. And that's impacting women hugely. Hi, Rajni. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. so coming back to the topic of stereotypes, what happens with, uh, hi Suparna, good to see you here, good to see you again. And so when we talk about stereotypes, two themes which come to my mind. <laughs> yes, Kirtika, I like that, boys can't cook. And this despite the fact that we have famous cooks in India who are men and I don't need to need to name very many people but the more 
cookbooks, the more cookery shorts are all men there, but boys can't cook. <laughs> Very good. And I was reading somewhere, you know, and uh, you know, it's. Uh, a, no, I was reading on Facebook um, somebody who's forwarded a joke saying that uh, it, it's uh, it's a treat for the woman today. She doesn't have to make chapatis. Today's there's rice, so it's the woman. It's a treat because she doesn't have to make chapatis. Boys cannot make chapatis in any case. All right. So of course the discussion was around how sexist that was. So we'll not cover that. We'll talk. We'll stick to our topic of stereotypes. So two things that come out with stereotypes is social categorization and stereotype threat. Social categorization is we assume because an individual belongs to a particular group, uh, they have those traits, all the traits that belong to that group. So um, one of the experiments, uh, you know, uh, one of the experiments which was done long, long ago, 1968, I think quite a few of you won't have been born and uh, quite a fuss. I was born and I was one year old. So in 1968, this lady by the name Jane Elliott, so, uh, after the day uh, Martin Luther King was assassinated in the US, so she, want, uh, she wanted to explain to her kids, kids who are all from, who are all white, they wanted to explain to them that what does it mean, uh, what does privilege mean. So what she did, she did an experiment. She stayed up all night and she created collars. She stitched collars, brown collars and blue collars. And the next day what she did was she announced in the class that it has been found that uh, children with brown eyes are more superior, they're more intelligent. And uh, uh, children with blue eyes are not so intelligent. So what we'll do, she announced, that all the blue-eyed kids would sit at the back and she put the blue-eyed kid, the blue collars on blue-eyed kids so that it's very visible to the brown-eyed kids. So they're sitting at the back and she, it was observed that in that, the any activity that was given in the class, the brown-eyed kids were doing much better than the blue-eyed kids. And... Uh, and the brown eyed kids were more more playful and the blue eyed kids were quiet and you know kind of not participating in many activities and what she did the next day next day she came and announced that it's uh, you know i made a mistake yesterday the brown eyed actually it's the blue eyed kids who are most uh, who are better who are more superior than the brown eyes so she put the brown collar on the brown eyed kids and to ask the brown eyed kids to sit at the back of the class and she sat uh, and the blue eyed kids were sitting in front and they had certain privileges also and and the observation that day was the blue eyed kids the same kids who yesterday were not participative were doing much better and the same kids the brown eyed kids who were sitting at the back today yesterday were so uh, enthusiastically participating, solving problems. Today we're not participating or unable to solve problems which were easy the day before. So this experiment, of course, this kind of an experiment will not be allowed today, but she did it three times and third time it was recorded and you may want to see it, check it up on the, on YouTube, it's available there. It is very, very evident the kids who were told that they were less than the other kids were not doing as well and that is what social categorization does that experiment today it is jane elliott went ahead and became the diversity speaker and she speaks into a lot of forums so uh, so the impact of this thing is that we realize that we categorize people with certain traits those people actually start believing it and the other people start imposing it in that that's the harm we are doing. We are not allowing the kids, if you've seen, noticed, we have not allowed the kids to be themselves. They were either privileged or not privileged. And accordingly, they behaved in that manner. Instead of being themselves, their true selves, they are behaving in a manner that they should. So, Arsha, you pointed out women can't be breadwinners and you know that's how they are treated at home, at, at, the, at various workplaces. At workplaces, they don't, uh, I mean, there are, I know people who've actually been told that you're only a second uh, earner in the family, 
i mean the other person needs it more he's the breadwinner so he needs it more and also at home the expectations from a woman uh, irrespective of what her earnings are or what she does we all know it i don't need to explain over here so thank you for sharing that so this is about social categorization when we categorize people or when people fall into a category or they perceive that they fall into a category they start behaving in the manner even if they don't believe it so uh, so that's about social categorization uh, another example i'd like to give which again is uh, on youtube bbc had conducted this experiment what they did they cross dressed children so boys were dressed as girls and all these kids are less than 1 year old and girls were dressed as boys then they uh, invited some strangers of course they had spread out a lot of toys around the kid they invited strangers to play with this kid so at a point one kid one stranger and it was observed a child who was dressed as a girl the stranger had a tendency to play with dolls be more gentle with the child and when the kid was dressed as a boy the stranger was a little more physical with that boy you know jump you know throwing them here or you know playing with them uh, you know throwing them up in the air kinds and and also offering them toys which are so called boys toys um so what happened with this you know once the stranger finished that and came out they were asked that okay what was the experience so uh, somebody says oh i saw that she was very very attracted to the dolls so uh, so the interviewer asked her that uh, do you think you may have done it she says no no of course she was reaching out to that of course and they were close by so i handed them and when the the person who went inside or the stranger was told actually she's a boy then they realized that it is their own perception which may give the child those toys which were so called girls toys that is a doll and vice versa and there was a realization there that we have categorized them it's not the kids choice but what we perceive their choice should be based upon the category that they belong to and uh, we all know pink is not for boys <laughs> and uh, blue is the boys color now as kids now these are colors pink and blue are colors they are not gendered colors they are just colors pink is a pink and a blue is a blue and we've made it a boys color or a girls color are you aware that there is no written documentation of pink being a girls color and a blue being a boys color until world war 2 only in one uh, piece of information somewhere it's written pink uh, you know pink is intense blue is gentle so blue is for girls and pink is intense so it's for boys and uh, only a magazine article saying that but otherwise there is absolutely no documentation somehow pink became girls color and blue became boys colors after world war 2 when a lot of commercialization happens so it's all about marketers doing so when we buy colors for the children it's not their choices we are categorizing them in the particular category and and who's benefiting of course the marketers with all the toys you know, all those from hyderabad can see that when coming from banjara hills towards panjagutta there's this huge board there which says uh, toys for big boys i don't know what is this i mean why can't girls play with it i really don't understand so so we understand social categorization and it impacts a lot of decisions that they make it impacts the career choices they take up it impacts a lot of i um, mean uh, the way they behave in a uh, socially it everything gets impacted when we categorize them socially um you know and uh, you know you can think of many others you know uh, that uh, you know dark complexion people should not wear a particular color old people their yeah, social categorization old people should not be wearing more modern clothes or you know flashy colors so and if somebody is wearing we expect we expect them to be mavericks and we don't expect them to be good people we you know we say you know why is she wearing this color or why is he wearing this kind of a print 
you know this is not for men and this is not how old women should be wearing old women should wear sober clothes so we've kind of created those categories and we we trying to box them into it which actually stifles them sometimes and they're not able to come out as themselves what they are now having done social categorization i would also like to take the next topic which is a uh, stereotype threat which is even uh, which is which is something that uh, something very very dangerous for individuals i would say the word i use the word dangerous this uh, a stereotype threat was coined by dr claude steel and they were what he and his team what they were trying to assess uh, or they were looking at scores of students so what they found that students who've done so they're talking about us grad uh, undergrad so students who had scored equal same in the sat test of course they these students would have scored the same in sat test because they the preparation before that has been good and they are of that intellect so students who had scored same in sat test uh were not scoring the same in during the classrooms and when they started doing some analysis they found certain categories of students were not performing as well as certain other categories and they thought probably there was it's just a coincidence but when they went on to research and they found out that uh, women were not performing as well as men in maths and the african Amer american community were not performing as well as the white community in again in various subjects so in the further analysis they found out what is called stereotype uh, i mean they found that there is this um, uh, this uh, stereotype threat when um, is something that you know when it is something that impacts our mind so when we hear something repeatedly things like women can drive or women are not so good at maths our mind starts believing it sometimes it is you know, even if my, even if consciously i don't believe it but at a subconscious level i do believe it and uh, what happens is during periods of stress and high pressure it impacts and it pops up it's like if i take a very very uh, a uh, common example of a parent telling the child you know don't play here you're going to get hurt you're going to fall you know and the child continues playing and actually falls down and hurts himself or herself so what does the parent say first thing see i told you so and that's what happens in our mind stereotype threat is that if i've heard repeatedly women can't drive so one mistake i do and my mind tells me see told you women can't drive uh, that's how it impacts so it impacts a performance during high pressure situations because it uh, because a mind is actually um, and uh, dr uh, dr steel also says this that this is because a mind is to doing two things simultaneously one it's doing the task to it's trying to prove or it's trying to it's trying to prevent itself from doing what the stereotype says so when i'm driving in a very very narrow lane so one i'm driving the other thing in my mind is saying women can't drive see i told you so there's a very very high pressure to perform and in that pressure my ability to do that task comes down because my mind is divided into two parts so <coughs> excuse me so we have to remember uh, next time when we say these things about a category of people we have to remember that what will happen is it becomes true there is a because of the uh, because of the uh, because of the need to perform in that area so Uh, I'll give you two examples. What happens? Uh, no, no, women are not good at maths. So when they did that experiment, so they did that experiment with certain number of 
men and women and before the task was given to them uh, before the before a very very complex mathematics task was given to them to one third of students they said you know it's seen that women are not so good at maths it was just a very very statement said in, in all casualty and uh, in all um, casual attitude and not with specific meaning and on the other side on in the other group they actually announced you know um, we've seen in this particular maths problem we've seen and our all experiments previously have shown that women perform as well as men in this particular task in in this and the task is complex mathematics problem so when they gave it to two different sets of people the we can all imagine it's a second one which was told that women perform as well as men where the women actually performed as well as men there was not much significant difference between the way the performance level of men and women whereas on the other side uh, where they were told that women don't perform or women are not so good at maths there was women did not perform and remember we are talking about men and women with same sat scores so intelligence levels are same but uh, but still when up to a certain point it's okay and but when the complexity of the problem starts uh, starts increasing the mind says see see women are not good at maths see and that's when they start the f during that frustration the stereotype threat takes over and uh, and the women give up and then they are not able to do it so another experiment in this was done with um, african americans and and uh, the white uh, and the and the whites so rajni says her friend uh, uh, got his maths ability from his mother yes that's true so luckily in india uh, we don't have this stereotype uh, girls are not good at maths but definitely the stereotype goes that girls are not very good engineers and i know a whole lot of engineers who are doing extremely well <coughs> so uh, so uh, i was talking about the african americans and the white and it is the stereotype goes that the white race is more intelligent than the african americans so there was a golf you know let's uh, talk something more physical rather than um, something to do with maths so the, they'd given a golf task where there were number of putts and they had to put the ball in the putts so it <coughs> there were multiple things and before the <coughs> excuse me before they started it was announced it was told that this is less of your golf skills more of strategic decision making so when i say strategic decision making it directly relates to intelligence it was found that the african americans did worse than the white americans who were also part of that experiment for the second group what the set is you know this is a test of your athletic ability and we all know african americans are as athletes they do much perform much better so stereotypes also go against every community there is every community has certain stereotypes so whites are not so good in athlete, uh, athletics ability so, so in the second instance when they were told that this is more a test of your athletic ability the blacks did, uh, the african americans did better than the white caucasian so you understand how it works that when we announce it and and uh, it actually we start we uh, we start seeing the results without doing anything saying those words if we grown up with those words there is a certain belief systems that come into it and all the women out here would understand you now how we came out of those belief systems about you know sharing the load workload at home sharing um, i mean especially my generation we're talking about where we were brought up to say okay women are only at home and the men are who the ones who go out and on and just to get our uh, families to share the load it was a huge um, thing that we had to come out in ourselves as well 
so uh, hmm. so similarly how we don't see very much when women becoming leaders because leaders are associated with men the moment i say the word ceo a man with a coat and a tie comes into a mind uh, i don't think of a lady there so, and uh, there's another uh, so sim, uh, in this despite the fact i mean uh, rashi just to share this with you in india we have a lot of ceos of banks who are women in our in our country i mean of course these ceos have grown within the bank and uh, people had trust in the capabilities they trusted their own capabilities and they've grown within the banks and gone to the level of ceos in the united states where it is assumed women are not good in maths you will not find very many women in the banking sector and not a single ceo who's a lady all the ceos are men uh, women are not very good leaders political leaders we know in now a lot of nations uh, has not had a single lady uh, head of the state so these are stereotypes that we carry and stereotype threats are harming us tremendously so what do we do to minimize it what do we do <coughs> what's the next step for us so there are two parts of it one i carry stereotypes about group of people around me and there is a certain mi- minority where i carry a group uh, mm-hmm. let's say so hypothetically i'm uh, gray haired so all the people around me are gray haired my age group and there's some youngster who comes in so that youngster or two youngsters who are the minority group here we the stereotype we carry oh they don't have enough experience so they may not know very much how to, you know how uh, about decision making they don't have experience but the fact is they come with specific skills and probably their ideas may help us in our decision strategic decision making in our businesses or in our uh, other forums so how do we create that environment that these two youngsters are become comfortable in speaking in a group which is more of people more of gray head rather than younger generation so that is our responsibility how do we create that safe space how do we encourage them to speak that's one part of it the second part of it how do i minimize the stereotype that that impacts me that is women can't drive so i have to convince myself i have to move from being about see i told you so to the word i can what we call it as a growth mindset moving from a mindset that women can't do it or i shouldn't do it or i can't do it to i can try new things to do it i can you know experiment with it i may fail again but it is also possible so two parts again that one that if i belong to a group and there are people who <coughs> are from minority in that group i should create we should all create an environment which is which feels safe for them on the other side individually i should be comfortable and say that okay you know i can do it you know in maths i can't give up just because i'm stuck somewhere i can't give up i sh- i still have to do that problem and in driving if you know, there are enough women who are driving i should take their example and then um what else uh, yeah that's it for me so next time you stereotype someone think about it again you know think about oh you can't do it you're too young or you oh you shouldn't do it you're too old or you know you're a woman or you're a man or men shouldn't cry and when i say all this remember i'm talking to individual out there and individuals are individual each individual even though they belong to a certain group they may not share the entire i mean not every individual in that group is identical you know um okay sometimes certain color suit aesthetically well for kitika says uh, sometimes certain color suit aesthetically well for certain skin tone if i am a photographer what would be my line to maintain for not falling under bias situation even as an artist i feel there 
are sometimes I have caught myself. So what I'm hypothetically assuming that, you know, as art, we've been taught, okay, this color suits this part or this skin tone goes with this. Now we have to expose ourselves to situations and, um, and places which defy our stereotype. So, you know, if I say red color doesn't suit dark skin, um, I have to go look for instances where I've seen, seen people who are dark skinned and wearing red color uh, uh, and look amazingly beautiful. We have models who are dark skin toned and the way they carry out themselves. So going towards, uh, you know, uh, looking for instances which defy our stereotype is something uh, that we must uh, we must uh, do it's very very important and um, you know and uh, if we don't defy stereotypes we'll never have mavericks we we would have never experienced modern art we would have never experienced somebody who's different if we continue to do, this, do the same thing as defined by books or as shown by books so uh, if i see a, a lady with gray hair and wearing a halter neck and you know something really really uh, which is suitable for young, suitable in my mind for younger people you know let me appreciate her only then will i get that thing out of my mind that this thing is suitable for younger people you know, if i appreciate i look at it and i uh, you know i i admire what's looking good about it that's when the stereotype in my mind that this particular dress looks good for younger people. I mean, in fact, if you've seen uh, Nina Gupta of late has been wearing real short dresses. So Nina Gupta at the age of 60, she's defying all laws and she looks stunning. So the more I look at those pictures, the more the stereotype that old people should not wear short dresses will become less. Uh, will be the stereotype the impact of stereotype will become minimized so thank you Kirtika, for appreciating this <coughs> uh, any other questions i'll be happy to answer individual yes thank you rajni individual is an individual and we look at individuals as individuals so as human beings it's very very difficult for us to get rid of our uh, stereotypes biases but what we can do is, if you remember in my last talk, I talked about system one and system two. Uh, system one is the fast brain and system two is the slow brain. Now, give myself a moment. Is this really true? And, you know, is this really true uh, that, uh, is this really true about the other person? So, uh, going back to the example, women, uh, you know, older women shouldn't wear short dresses. Is it really true? Why do I believe that? Where did I get it from? The moment I start questioning it, the moment I transfer that from my fast brain to slow brain, I will minimize its impact. It's not going to go away. Let's accept it. Let's acknowledge it. But, and um, so it will, it will minimize the impact. Women cannot deal with emergencies, a big myth. Yes, and COVID has proven it so strongly. Do you know the countries that have done extremely well are on COVID situation are all headed by women. We're talking about Taiwan. We're talking about New Zealand. We're talking about uh, um, Germany. And I think it's Finland. And one more country. I don't recollect right now. They're all headed by women. And they're the best. This is the best example where women have handled emergencies so beautifully and emergencies at that scale where everybody else the best countries in the world have not been able to do it but where there are women heads of state they've managed it so beautifully thanks for bringing that rajni yes so thank you very much so stereotypes stereotype threat and uh, and uh, we talked about social uh, categorization so next time you pick up a pink for a girl and a blue for a boy. <laughs> so if you look at the irony of the situation, so it's all right for a girl to be blue, and uh, but it's not all right boy to wear pink. 
and also <laughs> it's all right for my daughter to play with boys toys so called boys toys but it's not all right for my son to play with dolls so uh, you know we really need to do a lot of reflection start believing i mean start questioning all these to get get to minimize the impact of stereotype self contemplation is needed before believing blindly absolutely before even realizing i mean we don't even realize the kind of stereotypes that we have so we need to do a lot of self contemplation yes thank you for that so thank you today uh thanks for joining in bye bye so uh, you know stay safe stay, stay healthy and happy happy rest of the week for you bye bye take care